in a previous video, I said, hey, I'll do RC circuits. I'm going to do an RC circuit. I'm going to derive a discharging capacitor through a resistor, which is the simplest case. Uh, if you want to do charging or anything like that with the battery in there too, it's about the same thing. But for introductory level, I think this is fine. And then I'm going to do it in Python and then maybe change up things a little bit to show you how to do it in Python because that's pretty cool. Okay. So we have a capacitor in series with the resistor and this charge starts with a charge Q0. So if there's charge on this capacitor, then that's gonna create a, an electric current uh, going this way, I. Now we can use the loop rule. So the loop rule says that the change in potential around that loop is zero. So if I start from here to there, I get uh, the VC, the voltage across the capacitor, and then I have this current passing through the resistor. So I get, I'm gonna use I was using Halliday, Resnick, and Walker, and they use lowercase i. I hate that, but that's what I'm going to do. Minus ir, and that's equal to zero. Now, that seems all fine and dandy. However, um, the voltage across the capacitor depends on the charge, and the charge is leaving because there's a current, right? So right up here, I can say the voltage across the capacitor is Q over C, where C is the capacitance. Minus ir equals zero. But remember, I is dQ dt. It's the flow rate of charge. Now, if I want to put that in for I, I actually have to do something, right? Because this is the charge, Q is the charge on the plate, but it's decreasing. And this doesn't say it's decreasing or not. So this, if I want to put this in as I for that Q, I'm going to have to actually make this negative. So I get Q over C minus a negative plus dQ dt r equals zero. And this is the differential equation that we want to solve. So to solve that, we're gonna have to do a little trick. Let's move this to the other side. I kind of was poorly uh, spatially planning here. Q over C equals negative r dQ dt. Now I'm gonna divide both sides by negative r and I get dQ dt is negative Q over RC. Now I'm gonna use a trick, right? This is a ratio. It's a fraction. So I can, I can multiply both sides by DT and I can divide both sides by Q. This gives me DQ over Q is negative one over RC DT. What I've done now is to get all the Q variables on one side all the t variables on the other side, and I can integrate both sides of that equation, which I'm now going to do. Poor space management. Okay, so let's just write that out. The integral dq over q equals uh, the integral of negative one over rc t. Now, I left that as an indefinite integral, and that's fine. So what's the integral of dq over q? It's the same thing as saying, what do I take the derivative of and get one over q? And so that's that fundamental theorem of calculus that the antiderivative is an integral. Well, that one's, that one you need to remember, it's natural log. So I get natural log of q, which you can't do, right? Because it's got units, but it's okay. And over here, oh, that's dt. I just get negative one over rc T. And let's just say um, plus, I wonder where should I put the constant? Let's put the constant plus some constant k, right? Because I have to have an integration constant. I don't need two, right? Because um, if I have one integration constant on both sides, I can combine them to one side. So I only need one integration constant, and that's my constant. Well, we can find that constant by applying our initial conditions at t equals zero, q of zero is q zero. That's the initial charge on the plate, okay? So I'm gonna put in t equals zero. So that's uh, ln of q at time t equals zero is this q zero, right? That's my initial charge, equals negative one over rc times zero plus k. So k is equal to the natural log of q zero. Now, if I put that back in and subtract it from the other side, I get natural log of Q minus natural log of Q zero equals one negative 
1 over RC times T. And this is really nice, right? Because if I have a subtraction of natural logs, then I get a ratio of, of the values. I can write this as ln of Q over Q0. Now it doesn't have units, and now I'm happy. And we're done, really, but we want to get that in a better form. So let's take the raise each power to the power of E, and I get Q over Q0, right? Because E to the natural log is going to just be that. And that's going to be E to the negative 1 over RC times T. And then I can multiply both sides by Q0. Q is Q0 E to the negative 1 over RC times T. And that is my answer. That's my charge as a function of time. Now, maybe you want to get the voltage as a function of time. Well, the voltage across the capacitor is this divided by C. So I can say V as a function of time, I'll write it like that, is Q over Q0 over C E to the negative 1 over RCT. And then Q over C is the initial voltage on the capacitor. So it's going to be V0 E to the negative 1 over RC times T. Now, what if I want the current? Well, if I know the voltage across the capacitor, that's the voltage across the resistor, so I just multiply that by uh, the resistance and I get the current. Wait, V and divide by the resistance. V equals IR, so I is V over R. So you can divide that by R. Okay, so it's not so bad, right? But let's do this a different way. Let's go back to our loop rule. So I'm going to draw the picture up here again. So again, if we use the loop rule, I get uh, this, Vc, the voltage across the capacitor, minus, oh, lowercase i, ir equals 0. And I'm going to write that as q over, wait, yeah, q over c minus ir equals 0. Now imagine that I broke this into a very short time interval, delta t is 0.001 seconds. So during that time, there's current flowing out of the, out of the capacitor, uh, but it doesn't, if the current's small or the time interval is really small, Q is constant, right? It doesn't, or approximately constant. So Q is almost the same. So if I assume that Q is about the same, then I can write this and solve for I. You could do that, right? So if I do that, I get, again, I have I R equals Q. Oh, let me rephrase that. I R is Q over C. And, and that's not quite true. Again, we have to include a minus sign in there. Um, but I can solve for I. I have I is going to be equal to, no, I don't need to put that there. I is going to be equal to Q over RC. That's true. Now, we know that if I have the current, I can set the current as the rate of change of charge, delta Q, delta T. So I can solve this for delta Q. Delta Q is going to be Q over RC, delta T. Now I need to put the minus sign in. If I want to talk about the charge on the capacitor, as current flows out, it's going to decrease the charge on the capacitor. Okay. And, and I'm really done. Right? Because what I've done here is to calculate the current, use that to find out how much charge it decreased by, I assume the current was constant, and then I'll just go back up here and do it again. Once I say that, I can say Q2 is Q1 plus delta Q. So now I find the new charge on the, on the capacitor based on the old charge, I go up there and I recalculate the current, and then I recalculate the, the change in current, the change in charge. And so if I want to run this for one second, that'd be a thousand calculations. Nobody wants to do that, so we're going to do it in Python. Let's do it. Okay, going over here to Python. So this is WebVPython. I'm going to give you the code. Very simple program. So let's make a graph. G1 equals graph. Uh, title equals RC circuits. Circuit. Uh, X title. Is this big enough? A little bit bigger. X title equals a time in seconds. And then Y title is going to be equal to Q in coulombs. And then I'm going to give it a width just so it fits. Width equals 400, height equals 200. 
uh, F1 is G curve, color is color dot blue. So if you haven't done graphing in WebV Python, um, so the graph just makes the, the, the axis and everything, the actual curve that we're gonna plot, I'm gonna, I need to give another name, I'm gonna call it F1. I always do F1, I'm not really sure why. I think I picked it up from someone else. Now I'm gonna need some values. So let's say the resistance is, um, let's just try uh, 10, 10 ohms, and the capacitance is 0 0.1 farads, which is kind of big. Uh, time is zero. Q, I need to start with some charge. So let's actually say that I, I charge it to five volts, right? So if I charge it to five volts, that's Q over C. So Q would be uh, V times C. V is Q over C, right? So let's say it's going to be five times C. I think that's right. Now I need a time step. DT is 0 0.001. And I'm going to make a loop while t is less than 1. I'm going to run this for one second. So the first thing I want to do is to calculate that current right there. I is q over rc. So I'm going to say i equals q over r, r times c. Now I'm going to use that to update the current, the charge. So q equals q minus i times dt, right? So that i, that's what I have right there. It's up there, yeah. Okay, now I can uh, update time. Let's plot it, f1.plot t q, update time, t equals t plus dt. I feel like I did something wrong. Let's just run this. That's it, I, did, I didn't do anything wrong. So it's discharging. You can see it's a curve. Let's run it for, uh, let's say, three seconds. I mean, it's the simplest program, right? I mean, half of the code is how to make a graph. That's it. So you could plot the theoretical solution that we got before, too, and just see if they're the same thing. That will just double check it. So let's do that. I'm going to make a second curve, F2 equals G curve color is color dot red and then down here I'm going to calculate the theoretical so I do need something I'm going to say q0 I'm going to need that in my calculation is 5 times c it's the same thing I don't want to set it equal to it and then down here I'm going to calculate q qt the theoretical charge and this is going to be equal to q0 times exponent negative t divided by r times c that's what we said before. And now I'm going to plot that, f2.plot, t, qt, qd. Okay, let's see what happens. And you can't see the blue curve because they're right on top of each other. They are right on top of each other. Let's just change this time to something uh, crazy like 0.1 seconds, which is not super small, but small enough. And you can see that they, they are different. So in the approximation that the charge is constant, at, a time step of 0.1 seconds, not the best approximation, but it's not terrible either. Uh, but you can see that the calculation works. The great thing about doing this, even though it's a super simple program, is imagine that I wanted to put a battery in there, or imagine I wanted a changing uh, power supply, or imagine I wanted to put an inductor in there. We can do all those things, and the calculation's not that much different, and we can still get it to work. And we will do that later, but I wanted to just show you how to do both the differential equation to solve the RC circuit and a numerical solution. Code this down below, hope you like that.